Perfect. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's ninth day of the 30-day Sunrise Yoga Challenge for Beginners, Unleashing the Magic of Yoga. I would love to know the kind of magic that is being unleashed for you. Um, Many of us are coming to this challenge uh, with questions or with answers that we have to accept or with questions that we're afraid to ask or uh, or realities that we're afraid to acknowledge. And we want to do things differently by starting our day differently so that we might be able to embrace all that's happening in our world instead of living in only part of it and living with tunnel vision. And then you're always living in a reaction. Let's be alive. Let's be whole spiritually, intuitively, mentally, emotionally, and physically. Today is day nine. And we are focusing on these two types of classes of yoga. So there are all these different branches of yoga. There's Ashtanga, there's Kundalini, there's Hatha, which we do a lot of. There's Vinyasa flow, which we do a lot of. And within all of these little branches, there are these two energy types. One is Yang. Young, and we're going to get into this more when we look at the masculine and feminine energy in energies in yoga. But young is represented by masculine, and young is the right side of the body, and young is action, and yin is the feminine, and yin is the left side of the body, and yin is being. You need to act, you need to be, you need to act, you need to be. And that's why young and yin chase each other around that little circle when we see the uh, sign for the symbol for yang and yin, for yin yang. And we are going to have a class today where we're gonna explore those two energies and how to channel them. As it says in the description, yang is gonna target um, cardiovascular, it's gonna target um, fitness as we classically understand it is going to target muscle growth and muscle, um, and muscle, uh, balance because sometimes we can actually overdo it. And if you see, I remember one time I went to a yoga class and I saw the teacher and the teacher had these very chunky, clunky muscles. And I was like, oh, I'm going to go. And it's not because I don't like, I, I, I'll tell you exactly why I left. Because I knew that this was going to be a class of showmanship. It was going to be more like a yoga class that was about doing tricks than it was going to be about yoga and breathing and all the things that I love about yoga. So I just let it go. And the clue were the ways that his body was oriented because it was so filled with muscle, bulging with muscle, that there was no yin. There was no yin happening because one of the beautiful things about yoga is that it actually helps you develop smooth muscle. And the muscle is strengthened, but then it's stretched. It's strengthened, but then it's stretched. And the yin helps the yin aspect. That's why I say do two to three yang, one yin. Two to three yang, one yin. And you'll notice in our challenge, we get a really good balance. It's not one for one, but it's about two to three to one because that's what I believe in. So today we're going to have a yang yin class. You're going to feel what it feels like to have both of those energies in one space. And you will see your yoga studio will definitely offer, your local studio will offer yang yin classes and definitely take advantage of them. They're really fun. It's really lovely to get to um, have both energies and experience them in one at one time. So let's get started. We're going to first just bring ourselves fully onto the mat. We've just woken up. We don't have a day that we need to kind of let's settle in the background, but we do have aspirations, inspirations, pressures, fears, joys, excitements, all these different wonderful opportunities that exist in this potential of what the day might hold. And so we want to center ourselves so that we can have this time for ourselves so that we can be present for others 
first me, then you. Let your eyes close, ground into your feet. That means you're going to push into the balls of the feet, the heels of the feet. And then from there, let the toes find their home on the ground and let yourself ground in fully through the feet, feeling the energy moving in two directions, remembering that Mother Earth is supporting you. The more you will let your body rest and stand with and pushing into the earth, the more you will be held. Let the hands come to either side of the body. Let the eyes close. Let the shoulders pin towards the heart. The eyes of the elbow are going to point to the short sides of the mat. If you're doing the class with, um, well, you would be using the same map orientation, same mat orientation as me. Okay. And now from here, just let a word come to you. If you did your recommitment to these 30 days before we started in your journal, what stood out for you? What word in your recommitment statement stood out? Let it enter through your head. Let it percolate through your body. Let it root and enjoy throughout the day. Re-remembering this word and letting it bloom in different ways in your life. Inhale through the nose. Belly expands. Exhale through the nose. Belly contracts. Inhale, exhale, take Ujjayi if you've got it, let's begin with the five Tibetan rituals, okay, let's see, do I have enough space, okay, good, so my Hands are, you know, let's go like this. It's a little bit more comfortable. Okay. So my hands are going to reach down. Fingertips are reaching down and out. My head, my chin is parallel to the ground. My eyes, the gaze is on the ground. My shoulders are down and my arms are spread. And let's begin. One, two, three. Four, five. Let the spin find you. Ah, open the eyes and let's come to camel. Inhale, one, two, three. Four, five, J. Starting in J and inhale. Three. Four, five, tabletop, fingers pointing towards the feet, feet and arms are parallel, feet are only about hip width apart, let's begin, a little bit more than hip width, make a table, use the active grip for your wrists to protect, for your hands to protect your wrists, and inhale, Exhale, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And finally, upward and downward facing dog. 
don't forget that you can always do the modified versions. In the very first day, we learned the modifications for these poses. Don't forget to work where you are. Today, I will do the modified version of Upward Downward Facing Dog. Okay, I'm going to do the beginner's level. So, I'm going to inhale. Exhale, I'm gonna just, instead of going to tabletop this time, I'm gonna push back to child. Two. Three. Four. Five. And let everything come together. Inhale. And om or exhale. Let's begin our yang sequence and then we'll move to yin. So yang is very often associated with vinyasa flow. And we are going to do a very basic flow. You'll see this a lot. Um, this is one of my go-tos. Um, if you're in my class, then you know this, you know this sequence. We do it um, maybe, hmm, I'll do it like every four or five classes. I'll do this one. And it's lovely because we get to, we're gonna meet Warrior today. And um, we're also gonna do a little bit more balance. So you'll see that we're moving more and more towards hitting every part of a yoga class. A yoga class will typically include some warm up, some core work, some centering work, the warrior poses, balancing, um, back work, and then, I mean, inversion, back work, and then of course, Shavasana. So we are going to, to get there, we're going to use the beginning of Sun A. So two arms come up overhead. Exhale, fold through. Push back to up to flat back. And I'm gonna push back to plank. I'm gonna walk back to plank. I'm gonna push back to downward facing dog. And this is where I'm gonna stop. And this is how I'm gonna get into warrior two. So let me just walk you through what we just did. Two arms come up overhead. Exhale, folding forward. Bend your knees if you need to so that your hands can comfortably come to the ground. Inhale, flat back, pushing, two hands push against the shin and the back flattens. Exhale, fold forward. And this time you're gonna inhale and you're going to put your hands down using the active grip and you're gonna walk your body to plank. You can also do plank on your knees. Po totally fine. They'll just lean forward like that. And then from plank, you're going to push back to downward facing dog, which we're very familiar with. And from here, you're going to reach the heel into the sky, as high or as low as you want. This is the pose, this is the pose, this is the pose. Reaching through, keeping those hips squared, the knee is going to move along a line down the center of the body, and it's gonna plant between the two hands. You're going to rotate your left heel to be flat onto the ground, and it's gonna be parallel to the back of the mat. Now from here, you're like, well, how do I, how do I, what am I gonna do from here? I'm gonna show you, so just look at the screen for a moment. We're gonna push into this front foot, ground from there, and that's going to open us up to warrior one. Okay, so let's do that moment. And you're welcome to make your stance shorter so that it's easier to do that push up moment. So, and warrior one needs a shorter stance anyway. So let's say that you were here, you're going to rotate your foot, and then you're going to push in to warrior one, correct your hips so that they're square to the mat, pushing in to that front knee to try to make a right angle with the knee. So I have to push down a little bit more. And I'm gonna shorten my pose 
And now I'm at warrior one. And I'm going to bring one arm up. So my back foot is still, the knife's edge is parallel to the back of that mat. And I'm going to turn my hips towards the short side of the mat. And I'm going to bring both arms up. And now I'm in warrior one and I'm twisted towards the front of the mat. My front side body, the headlights of my hips are facing the front of the mat ideally. And as I start to waver or fall, what I can do is push farther into the front knee. I'm going to come into warrior one. And you'll also find more balance when you push into the back sharp edge of that left foot. And then I'm going to go from warrior one. I'm gonna to rotate to warrior two. When I come to warrior two, I've got to, I've got to expand this back leg or else I can't get into the pose. So let's do that transition again. We're in warrior one. And remember, you can go as short as you want. You can be here and do it. And then you can expand to here. And all that's changing, my hips. My hips are towards the short side of the mat. I rotate, arms come down. My back foot is now pointing where it was pointing away from the short side of the mat. Now it's pointing towards it. And I expand my reach. Okay, let's do it again. Warrior one. Pushing in and rotate to warrior two. Okay. Oh, actually, I don't know why I pointed that foot. You can't point the foot. I don't know why I did that, sorry. You have to keep it flat. You have to keep it on the knife's edge. Okay, so now we're in warrior two. Now we're going to breathe, inhale to warrior, to reverse warrior. Then we're going to exhale back to warrior two. And then we're going to take the last part, which is that we're going to tip our body, put our hand on our hip. And here you might wanna have a bolster or something you can grab that's a little bit closer to the earth. Um, like this, I could, I could grab this back part. because I'm gonna push off of my back leg and push into crescent, into half moon, okay? But remember, half moon can be right here too. What's more important is not that your leg is in the air. What's more important is that you're getting the feeling of the pose. So right here is half moon. I can put my leg flat. I have one leg on my tiptoe and I have one leg flat and that's half moon. And this is half moon and this is half moon and this is half moon. All of these are half moon. So let's do that moment. So. We're in warrior two. And then we're going to just put one hand on the hip. We're gonna push into that front leg and we're going to put our hand on a block or a bolster or the ground and reach down and push up, tip, tip up, tap, tap up. You saw my back foot tapped, tapped me up and reach the left arm into the air. And you can keep the right arm on the ground or you can go for a balance. Today, we're just gonna keep the right arm on the ground. If you go for a balance, it would be something like bringing the hand to the heart. Or you can go for a bind. There's so many things you can do, but let's stay where we are, yeah? And then you're going to bring all of that. You're gonna rotate so that your hips again are parallel to the ground. Then you'll reach the hands out to airplane to feel that balance. And then reach them back up and bring everything together to Tadasana. And that is what we're gonna do, breath for breath. This is the yang. So let's do it. We're gonna do right, then left, then right. When we do the left side, I'm just going to turn, I'm just gonna walk and turn around, but you guys don't have to turn around. Um, I just want you to see me when I do it. Otherwise, you'll just see my backside the whole time. Okay, so let's start with the left side because we just did the right. Here we go. Here, I can give myself a bit more room this direction. That will be easier. Okay, inhale, two arms up overhead. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, flat back. Exhale, Uttanasana. 
Inhale, we're gonna put two hands on the ground and we're going to walk our body back to plank. Exhale, push back to downward facing dog. Inhale, this time we're going to bring our left foot to the sky. Exhale, we're going to walk it through to warrior one. And I'm going to make that change that I promised. Two hands on the hips to correct the hips to face the short side of the mat. Pushing into the knee. Inhale, two arms up overhead. Exhale, hold here. Inhale, rotate to warrior two. Remember, you can also, I'll do a modified on the next one. Exhale, hold. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, come back to warrior two. Inhale, one hand on the hip, push and find, you use a block or use a, the ground or the side of something, the side of a chair. Inhale, opening up to half moon pose. Exhale, inhale, rotate to airplane. Squaring the hips to the mat. Exhale, inhale, bring everything together and press into the ground. Let's do it one more time, both sides. Inhale, pushing down to come up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, two hands come to the ground, walk to plank. Supporting your wrists. I'm gonna do the modified version this time. So this is the beginner's version. Inhale, bring the right back foot to the sky. Exhale, bring that knee through, place it between the two feet. Rotate that back foot and shorten the stance. Warrior one, squaring the hips. Inhale, exhale, we're gonna rotate to warrior two. Keeping a shorter stance so that we can start to feel the pose without hurting ourselves. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, back to warrior one, two, warrior two. Inhale, hand on the hip. I'm going to grab this back ledge. I'm going to tap my back foot, tap my back foot, tap my back foot. And then I'm going to let my body rotate towards the long side of the mat. And I'm going to bring my arm up. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, I'm going to rotate to airplane, squaring my hips. Pivoting my back foot. Inhale. Exhale. And inhale, bringing it all together to Tadasana. Other side. Pushing, this time I'm going to do the middle version. But remember, where you are is where you are, and you keep doing that one until you get strong enough to do the next version. Inhale, two arms up overhead. Exhale, full forward, bending the knees so that my hands can come to the ground. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold forward, bending the knees. Inhale, I'm gonna walk back to plank. Exhale, hold here. Inhale, my left foot is gonna go towards the sky. Exhale, I'm going to bring the knee down and I'm going to set myself up for warrior one. This time my stance might be a little bit wider. Inhale, coming to warrior one. Exhale, open up to warrior two. Let's, let's open the stance a little bit more towards the classic warrior two length. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, unfold to warrior two. Inhale, get the right hand on the hip, but we're again, 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 we're going to use a support. Exhale, and instead of letting my st foot stay here, if I feel solid, maybe my foot comes here. I'm gonna rotate my um, heart towards the long side of the yoga mat, bring one hand up, and I'll keep my other hand anchored to the ground, flexing the back foot if it's in the air. 
and rotating to airplane. I'm going to keep one arm on the ground because I do have one foot in the air. And then I'm going to bring everything together. Inhale to Tadasana. And now we have our three levels and you can do this video again and you can do it at your level. So now we've done the yang. We breathe, there was breathing, there was an inhale, exhale rhythm, and our body had to do some things. We might have a little bit of sweat going on. Now let's go to just one yin pose for today. And today we're going to work with um, puppy pose because we haven't done that one yet. I really wanted to do child's pose, but I realized I was looking at the plants and we've done child's pose multiple times, like a lot in only nine days. So let's do puppy pose. Puppy pose is going to start with the legs similar to child's pose, but instead of bringing the seat back to meet the feet, we're gonna keep the seat up and we're going to actually move the arms up. So we're gonna do that part of child's pose, but we're gonna keep our seat in the air. In puppy pose, what we're doing, and this is a really good complement to our, our back and posture work. In puppy pose, we're going to, our goal is to bring our chest, our heart, to kiss the ground. Today, it's only my chin. And if you need a support, you can absolutely put some pillows between because when your body's in contact with the earth, it can loosen up more. When it's in contact, when it's being touched by something, it can loosen up, it can relax more. It's the same effect of, of anything, reaching for something and then once you grab it, you relax. And then if you were to try to reach farther, the next second after grabbing that thing, holding on to it, you will reach farther because you have something to ground into, something to move towards at the same time, rooting and rising. It's happening in every direction of our body. Every time we walk, every time we reach, every time we stretch, every time we uh, try to get something like accomplish a goal, root in your commitment, rise, in your actions, yin, rooting, yang, rising. Mm. You can keep your chin on the ground. You can also bring the left ear to the ground. And I'll tell you when to switch it to bring the right ear to the ground so that you can balance that out as well. And as you, this is typical of yang, I mean of yin, as you get more and more relaxed in where you are, you will find your find it's easier, find yourself melting into the pose more easily. And maybe the bolsters that you needed before are now obstacles. They're no longer aiding the pose, they're keeping you from deepening the pose. <sighs> Okay, we've been here for about three minutes and that's about the average time we want to hold a pose in yin. So now let's push up, push back with your hands, push them back, walk them back up into child's pose just for a moment to give a counter stretch to the upper back work that you just did. Letting the shoulders roll over the knees. Push into the shins and the tops of the feet and the knees, pushing away from the ground so that you can roll up through the spine, through the spine. Mm, roll your shoulders up and back. Come to seated pose. 
<sighs> Acknowledge yourself. Congratulate yourself. You have just completed day nine of the challenge. <sighs> Thank you for joining me. Thank you for showing up. And any feelings that came up, make sure to journal them. Help usher them out. Out of you and into the world, good or bad. Wishing you joy, ease, space, and grace. <laughs>